Hey guys, Kev here, and I'm doing Blade Battles Night, okay? Takes me back to the days when I used to watch, um, fuck was that show where they, where they would have, um, robots that fight each other? Oh my god, it's robot fighting time. <laughs> Fucking love that show. Somebody tell me, Battle Bots. Battle Bots! I loved Battle Bots, dude. Tombstone, just coming in, bam! All right, sorry. So tonight, we have one left-handed knife, one right-handed knife. This is the battle of the small sheep's foots. Sheep's feet. <laughs> First up, you've seen it before. He's coming in hot from a win against the EMP EDC Nimble. I think he's beating some others along the road to battle butts fame. Sorry. I had to do it. And he is the urban, urban, urban EDCCCC Vox Nez F5.5. We haven't seen this variant in a blade battle yet, I don't think. This is the titanium version in L Max Steel. How about them apples? I just got this in. Obviously, I've had this knife in M390 before. I have one. In carbon fiber and LMAX, I have another one in natural micarta and M390. I've had like eight of these. I had the Sega, I had a green micarta, two green micartas, two natural micarta, two titaniums, one Sega ha titanium, a carbon fiber one. Okay, I know this knife. I like a did another knife. Beautiful sheep's foot blade, got that gorgeous Riot belt satin, all titanium, just. Oh, that monochromatic look on this knife is absolutely fantastic. You got ergos for days, depending on your hand. For me, it is literally perfect. I love this knife. If you talk to anybody I know, you they will tell you that I am crazy. And I just have this thing for this knife, and I just buy them. I just buy them. That's what I do. And I love it. And it's about 3 inches, 2.8 or something like that. 2.9 on the blade. And... The contender trying to vie for the title of the sheep's feet little knife is the Leon Mama Mama Cop 3.0. Bam! Look at this baby coming in at a three inch blade. You got carbon fiber monoblock construction like his big brother, the Field Duty EDC, who is battling. The Axon tonight as well in the other ring. We got three freaking battles for you tonight coming up to our main event that I haven't done. And maybe I'll do it some other time. These will be separate videos. Just just go. Just go, go with me here, okay? Work with me here. <laughs> uh, anyway, Carbon Fiber, LMAX with that beautiful stone wash. Uh, get your Leon model. I mean, guys, this thing is incredible. Uh, it's just an excellent little EDC knife. Um, I've absolutely fallen in love with it. It's another one I just got in. So these were two knives I sold before Blade Show to get money for Blade Show. And I now have both of them back in the last couple weeks because I just missed them. Um, so this is going to be a tough battle. I mean, it really is. We're going to see who comes out on top in this one. Um Man, I don't know. My heart, what does my heart tell me? What does my heart tell me? I don't know. I really love this knife. This is probably the best knife ever. Oh, I didn't say that. The Evo is, but this is, this is close. But then, Leon. Leon. I love it. God damn it, I love this knife. So much more pocketable and it's left-handed. That's going to come into play. This one comes in righty and lefty. This one's righty only. Well, well I think... They might be doing a lefty, though. I don't know. Somebody told me that. It wasn't them. It was somebody else who talked to them or something. I don't fucking know. Anyway, who's going to win the Battle of the Small Sheep's Foot? I don't know. Let's find out. Are you ready to Catch you in a second. Hey, guys. Here we go. This is the Battle of the three inch ish sheep's feet. Who's gonna win? Is it gonna be the Cuff 3.0 or the legend, the Vox F5.5? So, 
guys this one's cool because they're both uh sheep's foot blades right they're both around the three inch blade uh around the three inch mark in terms of size here i'll show you real quick um they're both titanium they both have very good steel oh they both have lmax actually um they're both made by riot uh, there's a lot of similarities here there's also differences i'm going to keep in mind that this one comes in a right hand version this is the lefty obviously but it comes in a right hand version this one is right hand only it is a liner lock which is helpful to lefties but the clip is right hand only and it's a righty lock only that may be changing in the future but for now this is what we have um yeah uh this one has reigned supreme i believe it's won every battle it's done i can't really think of all the knives i put it against i know it beat the nimble not too long ago um absolutely love the nimble though so anyway it beat that um i've had a million of these i've had two of these so um, I love both of them. It's going to be an interesting one, like I always say. So let's start it off with materials. So this knife is in carbon fiber, has the monoblock construction. I don't want to talk too much about this because I did in the other battle with the Field Duty EDC. Basically, it's a chunk of carbon fiber that is milled out for the internals. So in there, it's all milled out. There's no backspacer. So instead of a construction like this with scale, backspace, or scale, you have just one scale that becomes the backspacer, basically, and then this scale screws into that. It's pretty cool, or this way, whatever. Um, it's sort of like rounded off here, like chamfered right on this edge right here. It's really cool how they do that. Um, so it's very unique. It's taken from uh, Strider Knives. Leon got permission to do that. Um, all right, then you have titanium on this side. You have a ceramic ball in the uh, 3D milled clip. And you have a stonewashed, very nicely stonewashed, LMAX blade. And it's on bearings, obviously. And then this guy right here, you have titanium scales over, uh, I believe, titanium liner on one side. Well, this side has the liner lock in it, and that side, I believe, has a... Yes, it does have a titanium liner in there as well. Interesting construction. They did it that way so they could use all different scale materials and have the parts all work the same. But anyway, so it's all titanium. Backspacer as well. Clip is titanium. It is just a kind of loop-over sort of titanium bended clip. Uh, and then you have a Rehot belt satin on this LMAX blade, which is absolutely gorgeous. Also on bearings, of course. Uh, so in terms of materials, they're both amazing. This one you can get in a, in a, a carbon fiber version, a micarta version, uh, M390 or LMAX. This one you can get in G10 and this carbon fiber. Um, I would say I'm gonna compare these two that I have on the table. This one has titanium just like this. Uh, both have LMAX, but this has that gorgeous freaking monoblock construction, ceramic ball in the 3D mill clip. I just think the materials are a little bit nicer on this guy. I would argue the uh, belt satin on here, absolutely fantastic, but it's materials, not finished. So uh, LMAX on both of them, right? So I'm going to go with the cuff for materials. Price, this one's uh, pretty easy. Actually, not as easy as you think. This one, my card starts at 200. Titanium version right here starts at 250, I believe. Uh, that was with M390. I'm pretty sure the LMAX would cost the same. So 250 bucks for this guy right here. This knife right here cost me, I think, 250 I paid my buddy who had it. Um, but I believe brand new, this knife was... Three, I don't know. Was it three seventy or something for this guy, or three eighty nine? I know the four inch one is four hundred dollars, like three ninety nine, with the carbon fiber. And then if you got G ten, it was like three oh nine. So either way, it's a good bit more than this. I'm ninety percent sure of that. So I gotta go with F five for price. Uh, perceived value. This is uh, a category I always kind of 
have to figure out when I do it, which is fine because it's my video. Uh, Leon Ma has this thing where people just think his knives are overpriced. I, I hate to say that because I love Leon and I love his knives and I buy his knives. So, um, but people seem to think they're overpriced, even though a lot of people buy them, they're very popular. You can see I bought a few of these. Um, people think they're overpriced. And I, I think at 300 and call it 60 bucks for this guy right here, I don't really have an issue with that price because I know it takes a lot to do this mono block. And just, you have to get them in hand to understand why Leon Mons cost the price they do. I've handled a ton of them and I understand. I have no problem with the pricing. You'll see the differences. Like, there is a difference. And that's why this one's $250 because it's sort of a flat finish. Um, everything is pretty much, you know, the same in terms of, um, material. Um, it's a, a inset sort of liner lock instead of a frame lock. It's a loop over clip instead of a, you know, 3d milled clip. Um, these were selling for a little more than they were originally priced for at one point. Now they're pretty much at retail. These sell usually for a little less than they were new. Like I got this one. It was a friend, but I got it for like 250 or something. And this was like 360 new. Um, so I'd say in terms of value, this is really holding its value at least. This is maybe a little bit under, so I got to give the perceived value to that, right? That's kind of my theory on that. So that goes to F5. Ergos. So this is one I really want to get into. So the uh, Cuff 3.0 does not have a choil, which is sort of interesting because I'm comparing these and it's a Leon Ma and he's really known for choils, but it sort of does too. It has this like built-in choil right here. And the way that works with this neutral handle, just it does not feel like another neutral handle. Normally, I don't take other knives out while I'm doing uh, these videos. But look at this knife, the Sirius from Artisan. Similar idea, right? Got a very neutral handle down there. See that? Just straight, straight. But because of this sort of choily thing right here, this just feels absolutely like melting into my hand comfortable where this doesn't it just doesn't have that effect because there's just not that little bit up here that gives me that um i know that was a shitty explanation but i can't explain how well he did this it's also maybe the thickness of the handle and the width right here i don't know it just feels so freaking good in my hand the f5.5 is also ergonomically fantastic. Now, on this knife, you have two grips, right? On this one, you have one. It's just right here, you know? Um, this one, you can hold it down here. There's a little finger groove and then a little bump and then a kind of swell-ish. And then it kind of flattens out back here. I don't think I've ever held this knife like this. Uh, this is actually pretty comfortable and I almost get all four fingers on. But in this grip is what I'm going to be talking about. This knife also is just impeccably comfortable. Uh, my finger lands on that jimping, and it's just, it really is an ergonomic dream to hold that knife. Um, and this is just, man, it's just so hard for me. So I think for the first time in uh, this battle, the left-handed thing is going to come into play. So I'm not feeling that clip at all. It's flat right here. It just feels fantastic. And um, on this guy, sadly, I feel that clip sort of on a finger right here. A lot of people, righties, have complained about this clip being pokey, which I don't have that problem because I'm not right-handed. Uh, but as a lefty, I can feel it like on a finger here and there. Now I can position myself so it doesn't really happen once I'm gripped. But it is there where this just doesn't have any of that. So I got to give the Ergos to the cuff for that reason. But they are neck and neck. 
Aesthetics, man. This is another just tough one, man. These are all tough. That's why I do these, by the way. I take two knives I think are similar. And then I'm like, yeah, I love both of those. They're similar. Let's do a battle, right? And it makes it tough on me. So we have sheep's foot blades on both. Um, the freaking gorgeous construction on this really sticks out to me. Um, with the Leon Maz. I love the shape of the hole. I love the way this right here is done. Um, when closed, I think it looks sexy as hell. From this side, it looks sexy as hell. The F5.5 is one of those knives that has just always been absolutely sexy to me since I got it. I will say when I first saw it, like for pre-order, I didn't even want one. Um, part of that was it, I used to only like knives that could be carried lefty. And I don't know, I just didn't get it. It looked a little blah to me. But ever since I got one, it's been one of the most gorgeous knives in my opinion um i absolutely love it i think it looks sexy open i think it looks sexy closed i think it's an absolutely stunning knife i think the belt satin really gives it a pop that this doesn't have because of that it has this stone wash man these would have been gorgeous with uh belt satins but uh i think I'm going to give it to the cuff, and there's two reasons. This sort of thing right here kind of throws me a little bit on the design. I know why it's there. Actually, I don't. I feel like I was going to say it's there for blade stops, but there's no blade stop. It's like it's designed for blade stops, and then there's none there. So they didn't need to be there. Okay. And then this lanyard post is just, I don't get, it's just taking up, uh, it's like they... Yeah, they went out of their way for the lanyard post. Where this doesn't have any of those sort of compromises. It's just beautiful all around. They hid the lanyard post. I love the ceramic ball. Um, yeah, both are sexy as hell. Obviously, I love both. Also, the clip, that one's kind of an eyesore. This one's not, right? Um, so, cuff. All right. Cutting. Excellent. Excellent category, guys. Uh, man, these are both excellent cutters. Um, this one's tough, man. They both kind of have that sort of kitchen thing going on where, for me, they just feel so good in hand. I feel like they have that blade shape set up for it. Um, the way Leon designed this, though, is to where you can get into a cut without your hands being all over the mat, right? It's it's the kitchen utility folder. This guy doesn't really have that ability, but man, this has been one of my favorite EDC knives since the first one I got, right? Um, let's actually cut with them, and I'll try to get a feel. Now, you know, this isn't going to simulate like cardboard and stuff, but now I did just get this from a guy. Uh, he said it was basically brand new, so I'm going to assume that's true. Yeah. Man, it just feels like butter. Um, my grip is absolutely comfortable. I get nice and close to that paper when I'm going for the cut, so I have good control, good angle. All of that stuff is very, very nice always enjoyed cutting with this knife the cuff you can see because of that not choil but whatever design same thing i'm just right up on this edge and i can get into cuts sorry i can get into cuts very easily now this one since i've got this was a knife that a friend had uh, he did carry it obviously for a little bit when he first got it uh, and then since i've gotten it i've carried it a lot and i've used this knife so the edge may not be perfect on this one i need my buddy joe to put an edge on it but you can see still cutting very well it's kind of tearing actually there we go i mean it just it but it feels fantastic in my hand when i'm cutting especially um what i do a lot is open packages and cut out shipping labels and that's one of the reasons I absolutely love both of these knives. Sorry, I just want to get rid of that. 
OCD. Um, that's one of the reasons I absolutely love both of these knives because I'm a shipping label guy and what happens is I have to get down in and cut the labels out, right? And both these knives, it's just pinch grip. I'm down. Where's that tip? Bang. It's right there and I'm cutting, right? This guy, bang, right there and I'm cutting. And they're both just very excellent at that. Um, man, this is a really tough one. Um, so again, the way I hold this knife, it's not an issue. You see the edge termination there, how it just kind of drops off. If you were holding it back here and cutting, you could get that caught on stuff. So like when you cut through, if you don't start the cut up here on the edge, it's going to catch on that, right? Whereas on this knife, Leon just designs the edge termination so well in my opinion and maybe some people wouldn't like that because of how it sharpens i don't know for me i love it because you're never going to have that issue everything is just going to feed right into that edge right um i gotta give it to the cuff it just for me makes more sense when i'm cutting um uh, it's just as good with this little hook down here to the tip for the labels uh your hand is above your cut uh, it just, you know, neither of them have issues where stuff like gets in the hole. Um, you know, neither of them really has an issue cutting. I don't have issues with either one. I absolutely love them both, but one of them has to win. And, uh, I think it's gotta be the cuff. So cuff is taken off here. Carry. So interesting category this one's gonna be easy yet there's a caveat so this one's left-handed this one's not this one wins because it's left-handed i mean that's just how it is uh it does come in a righty version so if you're right-handed that's fine let's play that game if i was right-handed and i had a righty one which one would win it would be the f5 because it has a deep carry clip doesn't quite go all the way to the end but it's deep enough right i love a deep carry clip over this you'll see there's a good amount sticking out of your pocket with this knife especially for a small knife it's a little more than i actually would like i'm not sure why they did it that way they could have easily put the clip up here and maybe angled it this way there had to be a reason maybe it made more sense somehow or keeping it off the lock i don't know um but it could have probably been put in a better spot oh maybe because there's nowhere to screw it in i don't know because it had to go all the way through that's why yeah the screw had to go pretty deep because of the construction <laughs> anyway um and this being loop over yeah it uh as b's blades shout out to brian over at b's blades go check out his channel awesome guy uh he would say there's mushrooms growing in the shade down there uh they've never caused me a problem once and i've had a million of these knives uh, but this one wins because it's left-handed and uh, the clip is excellent pops in and out of pocket very easily um, it does kind of pop over your seam you get it to the seam pops over and goes in there's no clearance issue it doesn't shred your jeans it just has that pop because of the ball i absolutely love these clips and this knife is a little thinner so that helps too with carry it's lighter this is a super lightweight knife because of that construction um so yeah but that is the caveat that this one has the deep carry clip if they were both right-handed. I think it'd be close because of the weight and the size, but I think I'd prefer the deep carry. I've always loved carrying this knife. Um, carry, cuff. Sounds. Okay, so I've talked about Leon Ma. Sorry. And his monoblock construction. It also brings with it an acoustic sound. It sort of reverberates. I said this in the other video I just did, but um, Tri-State EDC, shout out to Cole over at Tri-State. Go check out his channel. He said it best. It reverberates through the handle because of that monoblock milled out construction, no backspacer. Uh, it's all kind of enclosed. It gives it like an echo chamber feel. just awesome the f5 has always been an absolute pleasure for me to play with fidget with
Always had that snick on the way out. Always, always enjoyed that. There's just something about it hammering out that, for me, is excellent. And as much as I love the reverberation in here, and it is unique and awesome, I've it's just been a thing with this knife since the moment I got my first titanium one last year. I'm just addicted to that sound. So the F5.5 is going to win that one. Fit and finish. So, uh, both of these are made by Riot. Both of these are constructed in an excellent manner. Um, it's got to go to the cuff one. Leon Ma, man, he just, the way he gets Riot to dial in the fit and finish is just epic. Um, his knives are always just better in the fit and finish category than anybody else's, even when they use Riot. The only guy who's come close is uh, Sharp by Design, Brian Nadeau. He's also a master at that. And that's why those guys are legends, you know? Um, I'd love to compare a Leon against a Sharp by Design. I got to do that. Um, but yeah. The fit and finish is just incredible on these knives. Dead nut center pretty much every time. I've heard of like one person with centering issues on their field duty EDC. This is the cuff, but I've had two of these, a 4.0, two of the EDCs, a full-size field duty. I've never had a centering issue. I've never had a detent issue. I've never had any type of issue, honestly. Um, they're all pretty much perfect. Um, I will say on this one, I did have where I could feel a little bit of movement vertically. Um, but it's pretty much gone now. So I don't know if it was just like a break-in thing or something with the bearings I put in there. Maybe I feel it a little bit, but it's not like rock or anything. And I've tested like spine whacking. That's not an issue. So I don't know. You could count that against it, but I don't really... I don't know. For me, it doesn't bother me. But the clip, the... You know, the only thing that this knife does better is, oops, the only thing that this knife does better is this belt satin. I love it. The milky grinds on the belt satin. Just absolutely gorgeous. And I do love this finish on the titanium. I really do. This is really just caught my eye since the first moment. I got that Sega Ha one recently, and it made me want this one again. I had to get one of these again because I got that and I was like, ooh, it looks like plastic. Um, but yeah, fit and finish goes to the cuff. Action. So, this one's going to go to the F5, I think, because the one downside to the cuff design is the hole shape and how thin it is and everything. It makes it to where all you can do is middle finger flick it. And you also can't have too stiff of a detent because um, I guess just the way the hole is so small that, like, I can barely get my finger in there. I don't know if you can notice, but, like, I barely get my finger in. <laughs> so there are occasions where I just completely miss it like this a couple times. Um, that does happen. Pretty, not like, there you go. It happens routinely like not enough to bother me or anything and if once i carry the knife like after a few minutes of flicking it i, I get it down again but when i first picked it like when i first got this in again after like months of not having it i was like i thought the detent was too light because i was like doing i don't even know what i was doing to fail it i was like doing see i can't even do it now i don't know what i was doing but anyway uh, that's really your only option there. You can try to walk it out with your thumb, but you have to back off the lock bar to do that. And you got to kind of get in there. Cause if I do this, I can't really get it cause I'm on the lock bar. So I got to back off and it's just so thin. It's just not enjoyable. And I can't flick it with my thumb at least. Yeah, like, I just can't do anything but the reverse flick, which is fine for me because I love the reverse flick. It doesn't bother me at all. The closing action, you have a little bit of room here. Push it aside, and I can get it to drop to my nail. A little shake, and it's down. 
I did put bearings in here. I tried a few to get the smoothest one. There's no blade play of any kind. It drops and a couple of shakes and it's home. There's something about this monoblock construction that it just doesn't allow a knife this size to drop shut. The only one I've had that does is the 4.0 cuff because it's just such a heavy blade. It just can't even stop the blade, you know. But all in all, I absolutely love the action on this knife. It's addicting. It's super fun. It's different because of the, the shape of the hole being a little smaller. Um, I have a lot of fun with this knife. But the F5, man, you just get that excellent right-handed thumb flick. Um, it feels so satisfying the way it bangs out. It has a stout detent. I mean, I would say most of the F5s I've handled, especially the titanium ones, are stout. Like, it's a pretty strong detent. You can see there when it breaks, it's just like flying open. This one I can, you know, it's good for... The way it's dialed, it's perfect, right? Um, they always nail it. But th these are a little stronger than they need to be, I'd say. Um, and they have dialed that back. The newer ones are a little less uh, strong. And I think people like those a lot more. But I like a relatively strong detent. I'm fine with it. And what you can do is just get your finger in there and push. You don't have to flick. You don't have to, like, blah, try to flick it out. You can just push and because of the great detent when it breaks it breaks like there's no stopping this blade you're not gonna have it pop out halfway i don't like, i caught it with my finger like you, you just can't right so that's satisfying thumb flick left-handed is satisfying thumb flick um right-handed is satisfying reverse flick right-handed is satisfying i can't do any of that with this like i can reverse flick it i can't lefty flick it i can't righty i mean i've never really even tried i guess i could do this no i can't get my thumb in there and then i can't flick it unless i get really low probably you know what i mean like i'm just not doing anything but this on this knife which is fine but this has a lot of options and then disengage it oh, it like it wants to take your finger off right when it comes down like that and then it's also not drop shut, but it is much smoother. Uh, I shouldn't say smoother. I should say it is even smoother. Yeah, you can hear a little bit of. And again, that's the mono block. That's just, I don't know what it is. But this is barely any sound. And it's just like, I do have skips in both of these, but it's just so smooth and I, my carbon fiber one essentially is drop shut. My micarta one essentially is drop shut. Um, just fantastic action on these. So it goes to the F5. And then leftability. Whoops, what just happened? Whoa. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Um, it's got to go to the cuff because it comes in a lefty and a righty. This right hand only with right hand clip only that was easy all right that was it the cuff absolutely demolished one two three four five six seven one two three four our winner winner chicken dinner is the cuff 3.0 from leong ma was that a surprise it kind of is because i absolutely adore this knife it's one of my favorite knives of all time. Um, I think I like this knife better than I like this knife. Overall, in my like collection and everything, I'm pretty sure I'm more of an F5 guy than I am the Cuff 3.0 guy. But I absolutely love this Cuff. And for EDC and all that stuff, for the handed you are, if you like reverse flicking. That's, that's the key to this knife. If you like reverse flicking. If you don't like reverse flicking, forget this knife. Like, just forget if it's not your favorite thing if it's not something you don't mind doing all the time like i always talk about flipper only flipper only knives are boring right which i've gotten more into them again lately but um this is sort of like that it's reverse flick only um so there's that but it's also amazing it's lightweight um it's so slim in pocket it it 
again, weighs nothing. The blade is just exceptional. Mine needs an edge, but like it's just fantastic for labels and getting into packaging and cutting up fruit for your kid. I took this to the apple orchard when we did that and was slicing up apples for her to eat. It was absolutely a ball. Disengaging is so easy. The action's incredible. Um, the look of it is gorgeous. The construction is gorgeous. The clip is just fantastic. I love Leon Ma. All these things, right? Um, so it deserves to win. But I feel bad because this guy is now been knocked off the podium and I love this guy so much. So I'm sorry, F5. You'll have your day again with another fucking battle, I guess. Sorry, buddy. Victory is yours, Liang. I think he just won two in a row. Did he, the field duty win? Yep. He just won two in a row. So I just did this one. So you guys probably saw this, but these two just beat these two. I love all four of these almost equally. They're all amazing knives. So you honestly cannot go wrong with any of these knives. So uh, I hope if you have one of these, if you lost, if my, if your knife lost the battle or whatever, don't take it. You know, um, this is my opinion and I love all of these, you know, so that's it, guys. Thank you for sticking with these long videos. I absolutely have a ball doing these battles. Let me know what you think in the comments. Love to hear that. And uh, let me know if you have any ideas for other battles. I love you guys so much. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.